Hey everybody, Dan from On One here. I've got a big passion for landscape photography. It's one of the things I love to do the most. And if you're a user of On One, you probably enjoy shooting landscapes as well. What I wanted to do today is show you what I think are probably the top five-ish most important features in Photo Raw when it comes to working on your landscape photos. Let's start off with what I think is number one, and then it's actually working with raw photos and the amazing power of the raw processor inside of Photo Raw. So let's start off with this photo. I think this is a great example. This is an average exposure. If you set your camera up and you used an automatic setting for setting the exposure, this is probably about what it's going to capture. It's got all the information in the shadows. It's got most of the information in the highlights. If you shot a JPEG or used your camera phone, you're probably going to get a shot that looks a lot like this as well. But you'll notice that even though the clouds are there, they're just a little overexposed. You know, there's not any detail in those clouds. And if we zoom in and we take a look at those, you can see they're just white without detail. And we can also tell that from over here in our histogram or our levels pane. You can see all this clipping over here on the right-hand side. That means they're white without detail. Now, if we just shot JPEG, not much you could do about that. Those information is gone. Those highlights are gone. But because we shot RAW, chances are there's a lot more information. And I'll show you the way you can find that. Grab your exposure slider and just pull it down. Oh my gosh, look at that. There's way more information in those clouds that are not being revealed because of the base exposure on this photo. Well, we can get all of that highlight information just by adjusting our raw processing parameters. And I'm going to show you a highlight optimized way of doing that. Let me just reset this. I'm going to go back to a fit view so we can see the full photo. Here's step one. You're going to adjust the exposures first, and you're going to use the exposure slider like it's your highlight slider. So I'm going to grab the exposure slider. I'm going to hold down the J key on my keyboard. If you're not familiar with this shortcut, it shows you anything that's white without detail it's going to turn bright red in the photo. So these are all of the areas that are clipped. Grab the exposure slider. I'm just going to pull it down until I don't see any more of that clipped information. Now keep in mind that that clipping only shows up when all three color channels are clipped. What I want to do is I want to bring it down by watching the histogram over here so that none of the channels are clipped. So I'm just going to grab that exposure slider and bring it down just a little bit more. There we go. That gives us just a little bit more of that subtle detail in those clouds, oftentimes because the sky is blue. So there we go. We've brought back all those cloud details. The whole photo itself has gotten a little bit darker in the process, but we'll show you how to fix that. The next step before we get to adjusting those midtones is going to be to adjust the black points. The white points set via the exposure slider and the black points being set by the black slider are kind of your first two adjustments. So now I'll do the same thing. I'm going to hold down that J key. I'm going to go to my black slider. And I'm going to bring it down until I get just a little bit of real black. You can see if I bring it all the way down, I get a very contrasty photo. And if I was to print it, all those areas that showed up in blue would be pure black in a print. Probably not very pleasing. So I don't want that much black. I want to have just the tiniest edge of black in the deepest, darkest places. There we go. That gave us back a nice contrast range. And if I toggle the preview on and off, you can see what I mean. There's the before that was a little overexposed and a little flat. Now we've got the detail back in our clouds rich blacks that give us a nice contrast range. Next step is going to be adjust the overall exposure. And we're going to do that with the midtones or shadow slider or a combination of both based on personal preferences. I'll kind of show you the difference. The midtone slider, think of it like a brightness slider. It's going to brighten kind of the whole photo with a stronger emphasis on the midtones, but it's going to affect the highlights and it's going to affect the shadows a little bit as well. This is a good general purpose adjustment. The other one is shadows. Shadows is going to bring up the shadows a little bit more. It's still going to affect most of the entire photo at a lesser rate, but it'll bring up the shadows even more. And it's kind of a personal preference as to how much you use of each or if you focus on one over the other. For me, I really like the shadow slider. I think the shadow slider in Photo Raw is amazing. It's much stronger than a shadow slider in any other raw processor that I've used. So I can have a very, very dark photo and still bring back quite of information. Let me show you. If I grab that exposure slider and I bring it down farther than it needs to go, so I get tons and tons of detail on those clouds, I can still grab that shadow slider and bring it up and get all that information and brightness in the foreground. It's almost like an HDR, but being able to do it on a single photo right here inside of Photo Raw. All right, there you go. That's kind of step one, the number one reason to use Photo Raw on a landscape photo. Number two, I think, is retouching and removing dust and scratches and things like that. You'll notice in this photo that there's some tiny little sensor dust spots up here in the top. Well, I'm going to grab my retouch brush to get rid of those. And I'm going to turn on a secret little tool right here called Visualize Dust. This is going to kind of add an overlay to the photo that's going to make it very crunchy and make it very easy to see all of those little dust spots. You can see how the dust jumps out. 
it's much easier to see. They're kind of subtle and can be hard to see here, but after I add certain other effects down the road, they'll become more obvious. So it's better to kind of nip those things in the bud now. So turn on visualize dust. I'm using our healing tool. And then all I do is I just go dot, dot, dot on all those little guys that I want to get rid of. And it's going to automatically pick a good spot for me. I can manually drag that around to a different spot if I need to, to get the best looking healing results. Once I've got those all zapped, I'll just turn visualize dust back off. And now you don't see any of those little dusty artifacts left over. Now that healing brush is a great tool for the little stuff, but what if I want to do something bigger? Like in this case, I have this pathway with people on it. Maybe I want to get rid of them. So this time I'm going to switch over and I'll use the perfect eraser. This is a content aware fill eraser instead. With this one, I just paint over it and it's going to automatically find automatic areas to fill it in with. So watch, I'm just going to paint along. I want to get rid of this entire pathway this time. So I'm just going to paint along the path. Let's make sure we get those people we don't want, their little dog. And look at that, kapow. It automatically fills it in with realistic image detail. If it misses a spot, I can always go over it again, add a little bit more to it. Let's get rid of these hikers over here I don't want. There we go, gone. Even over here in the tree, I can make a big long stroke and fill in that pathway as well. There you go, now it looks like no one's been there before. All right, the next one I find super handy is Sky Swamp. Sky Swamp allows you to seamlessly and easily augment or replace a sky. Now, sometimes you're just trying to enhance the sky just by adding a little bit of clouds over it or adjusting it. It's great for that, but you can also replace a wholesale missing sky. So here's a shot, shot in Iceland, very cloudy. Watch, if I use my little exposure slider trick, man, there's really not a whole lot there that's interesting to bring back. It's just a dark, cloudy day. So I'm not really gonna be able to create a very exciting sky, but I can replace it very easily by going to the sky swap tab. So it's automatically found the sky and created a mask. Now all I gotta do is just pick the sky that I want. So I wanna pick kind of a stormy sky. So I'm gonna go down to the Ocudrone Seriously Stormy Skies. You see how it's automatically popped in a sky for me. Now I just go through the sky category until I find one that kind of fits my photo, the lighting and the personality that I wanna create for my shot. Oh, that one looks pretty nice. That adds just a nice little bit of warmth in there. I'm gonna adjust my fade and my shift of the edge. This just lets me blend the skies in a little bit more naturally together. There we go, just like that. Let's take a look at the before and the after. There's before and after, just swapping out that sky instantly using Sky Swap. Makes for a much more interesting photo. All right, next up, number four, is Super Select AI. Actually, Super Select is probably be like number two, number three, number four, number five, if I had to pick my top five things beyond the raw engine that I think are important for a landscape photographer. Super Select is amazing. It allows me to apply adjustment to a region without having to brush. So I'm just gonna grab Super Select. And let's say I want to add some dynamic contrast, some detail to the mountains. All I do is simply mouse over that region in the photo. You can see how it automatically divides the photo up into the regions that it discovers based on their content, whether it's sky or mountains or water or rocks or trees. I'm just gonna pick the region that identifies as mountains. I right click and then I pick what I wanna to do to it. I wanna add a dynamic contrast filter. I can go through and pick which one I want. I'm gonna use a super duper strong one just for previewing purposes. This isn't one I would actually use for my final results, but it makes it really easy for you guys to see what it does. There we go, we added that heavy duty grunge contrast filter right there, and I'll turn it on and off, just like that. So it found the mountains, generated the mass for me automatically, put the effect in, I didn't have to do any brushing at all. I didn't even have to go to effects and find the filter. It was just click on what I want, click on what I wanna do. It's pretty crazy. All right, and last but not least is effects. Now, I kinda snuck in effects a little bit on the last one when we were talking about Super Select AI, that was actually an effect dynamic contrast, but, but there are tons of different effects you can use different ways. On this photo, I'm gonna use effects to actually soften some of the areas that are a little distracting to me. This bush over here on the right side of the foreground is a little distracting, and actually the little water in the foreground can be a bit distracting too. I really wanna focus the viewer's attention more on the mountains in the background. So let's soften those areas a little bit. So I'm gonna add a filter. I'm gonna use the lens blur filter. You notice how that kind of creates a realistic lens blur look. It's not just a simple blur. It looks like when you turn your camera out of focus, now what I want to do is I just want to put it over here on the bush on the right hand side. I'm going to go over to the masks. I'm going to use my gradient mask tool. I'm going to change my shape on this one to the center shape. And I'll click and you see it creates kind of a round shape and everything outside of it is blurry. Now all I do is I just 
position and size this in such a way that it's only covering the right and the bottom a little bit. So I'm just gonna make this thing bigger to start and then I can drag it over to where I want it to be. And the outer edge controls how quickly it transitions. So I can have a very hard edge or a very soft edge. I wanna have a very soft edge where I'm just starting to kind of blur the bottom edge of the water and the trees on the right, just like that. And we got me turn that on and off so you can see just a little bit of a subtle blur to make it a little less annoying and distracting there. And we'll finish that up with our trusty vignette. A vignette's gonna help us darken those edges up as well. I'm gonna use the strong preset and then using the centering tool, I can actually move around what we call the center in the photo. I wanna move the center up and onto the mountain so that way it's gonna darken a little bit more of the bottom and a little less of the top like that. So before and after. There we go. Let's take a look at the overall before and after on this one. There's our original out of the camera. And our after, after doing some rock processing to make sure we get all the details back in the cloud, doing some retouching to get rid of that annoying path and some dust spots. And then we reduce some distractions using a lens blur and a vignette as well. All right, there's the top five or so things that I find really valuable as a landscape photographer in Photo Rock. Ah, what the heck, let's show you one more. Let's talk about noise reduction a little bit too. Now, oftentimes in a shoot landscape, you're probably gonna be on a tripod, you'll be able to use a low shutter speed, you probably won't have a lot of noise. But if you shoot astrophotography, you shoot things at night, or you're traveling and you don't have a tripod, you might have to use a higher shutter speed, which can lead to some noise. And the best way to reduce that noise is going to the noise and sharpening pane and using no noise AI. This is a powerful AI-based noise reduction algorithm that's gonna automatically remove the noise. So you notice on a photo like this, this is shot at a pretty high ISO in a very long amount of time, 10 seconds. So even though this was shot on a tripod, it was shot at a high ISO for a long time. That'll also lead to a lot of noise as well to bring out that Milky Way. It's pretty hard to tell where the stars begin and the noise ends on a photo like this. So using traditional noise reduction, all we're gonna end up doing is just making it a big muddy mess. So instead, we'll switch over to no noise AI. There you go. On the right-hand side, you can see the after. On the left, you'll see the before. You notice how the before has that really chunky, diffuse color noise and lots of other luminous noise in there as well. If I move this back and forth, you can kind of see the difference. So there's before. Look at the snow in the mountain. You can really see the noise and the color noise in there, where if I wipe across, now the snow is nice and clear and clean. We haven't sacrificed all of the stars in the sky as well. We've actually clarified them, made them sharper and more crisp. All right, there's probably a hundred other great tools in Photo Raw for landscape photographers. I don't have time to show them all to you, but check out a lot of our other video tutorials. You'll learn lots of other great ways to use Photo Raw on your landscape photos. Thanks for watching.